Let's explore how we can use our architectural sketches and models and create photorealistic renderings in Viscom. I'm here in the desktop version of Viscom and I am in my workspace and I'm going to go ahead and click new file. Let's give our file a name. I'm just going to call this architecture and jump into the studio space. Next thing I need to decide is my canvas size. I'm going to stick with landscape. And let's go ahead and insert an image. So over here, the insert button, I'm going to upload an image. I've already prepared one here. This is just a transparent PNG. Next thing I'm going to do is click M or I can select this move tool here, select the image, and I'm just going to resize it a little bit and move it to the middle of the canvas, giving myself some space around this geometry to experiment with some outcomes. Next thing I'm going to do is select this layer hop over to the workbench area. Let's rename this master image. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a prompt box clicking on this plus sign here. Now I could go ahead and just type in a prompt here, but I'm going to do something slightly different. I actually went over to ChatGPT and I created some prompts. Feel free to pause the video here to have a look at this. But essentially what I did here is I asked ChatGPT to come up with three different examples. So three different architectural styles. We have colonial revival, postmodern and brutalist. And you can see each one of these has different elements, lighting, perspective, context, details, post-processing, timing, camera and film stock. So let's go ahead and just copy this over here go back into Viscom and paste this in here. Now, the next thing is I am, let me just resize a little bit. I'm going to keep the mode at render. The palette is Viscom general and the drawing influence is set to 100. Just a note about the drawing influence. The higher this number is, the more is going to adhere to the master image. As I bring this number down, the more creative my rendering is going to become, the more leeway we give AI to sort of experiment. So let's keep this at 100 and I'm going to click Generate. OK, so that's a pretty interesting example. Um, let's now decrease this to 90% and see what we get. Click Generate again. And one more time at 80%. And just to see what would happen if we went all the way down to, say, 50%, let's generate one more image here. So you see now it's starting to take quite a few liberties and it's actually quite far from my model. So maybe that's not what I want. So I'm going to delete this one here. And what I'm going to do is create three more versions at 180 and 190 and 80%. So I'm just going to repeat this one more time. OK, so as you can see, it's given me six different options that I can choose from. I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to go back to my master image, click on the plus button again. And let's move this down to here and I'm going to go back to my prompts and let's try something a little different. This time a postmodern building with palm trees and a swimming pool. And then after that, I'll do a third version, which, which is the Brutalist style. So I'm going to speed up the video right here as I'm doing this. And I will join you again once I've made six versions of example two and example three. So here we go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in some details. I would like to maybe put in some trees here and here. I'm going to create some pine trees. Maybe let's start with this area here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a new layer. And I'm going to use, first I'm going to make sure I choose a brush color that harmonizes with the rest of this image. So using my dropper tool, I'm going to come in here and choose a green and use my brush tool. And you can see I can change the size. I can also shortcut key S and drag to change my brush size. And you can see there's a couple of other options you can choose here. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw some tree tops right now. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is draw some trunks. So some tree trunks, I'm gonna again, select a color here. Maybe I'll sample this brown and leave my tool as is, maybe make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to start drawing the trunks. 
Okay, so you can see this is pretty rudimentary sketch of some trees. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select them using the lasso selection here. And I'm just going to draw a lasso around these trees. And make sure you have this layer selected. And now I'm going to prompt for pine trees on grass. I'm going to lower my drawing influence. Let's start with 80% and see what that gives us and press generate. Quite like that. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Now you will notice when we deselect command D that we have a little bit of the background here that doesn't match this background here. So what I can do now is use my eraser tool. And this looks like a good size. I'm going to just decrease the opacity slightly and I'm going to decrease the hardness. And what I can do now is just go in here and delete some of this background. Make sure you're on the right layer here. Okay, so you can see I deleted some of that background and now those trees blend quite nicely. Let's add some entourage. Once again, I'm going to click on this insert button and head over to my entourage. And you can see I have a couple of very uh, abstract figures here that I'm going to insert. I'm just going to click on this and say open. And let's just drag this above our first layer and use the move tool and scale this down. So now I can select the entourage. I can go into the prompt and I can type in man walking. Let's do this at about 85% drawing influence and let's generate. Great, I have something that I like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use the same workflow, delete the background, and I will speed up the video from here as I add a little bit more detail. Okay, so I added a couple of details. I could have added more trees here, etc., etc. I just added some shrubbery here, but you get the idea. So once this is done, I can always go back to Workbench and I can create more versions of this. One last thing I wanted to show is something called Mix. So I'm going to, in Workbench, I'm going to press on this plus button here and click Mix. And what I can do here is mix two different images and see the result. So let's take two that are very, very different. For example, this image here, I'm just going to put that one here and let's grab an image, maybe this one. And let's see what happens if I mix these two. I'm just going to connect both of these to this mix panel here and I can tell it how much to mix. Maybe we want more influence here, a little bit less here, and let's mix them. So as you can see, it took these two and this is the result. I can even mix three images. So let's go ahead and maybe choose this image and let's mix all three of these and let's make them mix them at the same proportion and see what that brings. So I hope you find this inspiring and that you will create many, many renderings of your own in Viscom.